Arduino boards come in all different shapes and sizes, but sometimes your project requires something tiny, something like this. This is actually a surprisingly feature-full Arduino-compatible chip. This is the AtTiny85, and it costs roughly $1. It doesn't require any external components, so the chip is all you need. It has 5 GPIO pins, 3 which support analog input, and 2 which support PWM output. So this little thing packs a fair punch for what it is. Another big selling point for it is that it's very flexible to what voltage ranges it accepts and it's also very low powered, so this makes it perfect for running off batteries. To program the AtTiny, first you want to get your chip, then get your micro USB cable. You then want to build yourself a, a tiny programming shield, put it on your Arduino Uno or Mega, put your chip in it and then plug your cable in. So it's really simple. We'll be going through making the shield in this video. It's worth noting that you don't need to build a shield at all. You can build a programmer just using a breadboard and some jumper wires. I wanted to build a shield though because I wanted something that I could reuse again if needed. To build a programming shield we need an Uno sized Arduino board, some proto board, male header pins, a socket for the AtTiny chip and a 10 microfarad capacitor. You can also add an optional LED and you'll need a current limiting resistor. The circuit for the shield looks like this. I built it so that the male headers of the shield fit into all the female headers of the first sections of the top and bottom of my Arduino Mega, but you actually only need to populate these four pins up the top and these three pins down the bottom. It's actually a pretty straightforward circuit to build, but it looks a little bit messy just because of the overlapping components. So here's what it looks like with just the components on the board and also just the wires. The most complicated part is actually just the male header pins, and I'll show you how you do them now. Insert the male pins into the UNO board and place your proto board on top. If you have to cut the pins, the easiest way I find is just using a snips. It should break off pretty clean. You then want to mark where the pins are on top of the proto board. After that, we'll remove the male pins from the UNO and place them in the holes that we just marked. Hold the pins in place and flip the board over. Then for each side you want to push down against the board so it pushes the plastic of the pins down to the end of the metal part. It shouldn't take a huge amount of force. The pins should now look like this when you're done. Now solder the header pins in place. You just need to do the end two pins. We can solder the other ones if we need them later. We'll solder the IC socket next. I like to use blue tack to hold the components in place when I'm soldering, but this is obviously optional, you can use whatever works for you. We can do the same thing here as we did with the male header pins, we'll only solder two to hold it in place, we can solder the rest of the pins as we need them later. The way we're building the circuit, we expect the little dot that's on the IC chip to be in the bottom left, so mark the board with an arrow or a dot or anything that'll remind you to put it in the right way later. Cut six lengths of wire and strip either end of it. I really recommend using wire strippers for this because it makes the job a whole lot easier. You now want to place the components one by one into your circuit as per the diagram earlier in the video. Once you put the components through, bend the legs so that they're touching off the pins that they need to be connected to. You then want to solder this connection. Make sure you put enough solder to cover both pins. Your finished circuit should look something like this. It's not the neatest build I've ever done, but it should do the job. Make sure you check for solder bridges, especially down at the bottom pins, as these are the power ones. A fault here could damage both the AtTiny and the board you're using to program it. Now it's time to test it out. I'm using this Mega because it has a micro USB port, and that's the cable I normally use. You then want to just take the shield and carefully push it in. You may need to bend some pins to get it to fit in okay, but it should press in pretty easily. Pins should pretty much be fully pressed down when you have the shield installed. We now need to load the Arduino ISP sketch onto the board we're using as a programmer. You can find it under the examples. This part's really important and I see it missed in a lot of guides. If you don't uncomment this line, hash to find use old style wiring, this shield won't work. You then should just save the sketch and program it to your board. We now need to add the software for the AtTiny to the Arduino IDE. In the preferences section under additional boards manager URLs, we need to add this new URL for the AtTiny, which I'll put in the description below. 
Then in your boards manager, if you search for a tiny, it should be available and you need to install it. Now under tools, we want to select the at tiny slash 25 slash 45 slash 85 board. You then want to go back to tools again and for processors, select the at tiny 85. Back to tools again and select clock internal 8 megahertz. Again, back to tools and we want to make sure that the programmer is set to Arduino as ISP. We then want to select the port. It should be the port of the board you're using as a programmer. And for the last time, back to tools and we want to click the burn bootloader button. I think I had debug messages on here so you mightn't see as much information but it should indicate that the upload was successful. We now want to test that we can program the attiny successfully so we'll open the basic blink example. Because the attiny doesn't have a built-in LED we need to change the sketch so we'll replace LED built-in with zero because that's what pin we have our LED attached to. You need to save this sketch, so save it as whatever you want, and then upload it to your board. If everything worked out okay, you should now have a blinking LED on top of your shield. We can now remove the attiny from the programming shield. First remove the power, and then using a flat-headed screwdriver, pop the attiny from the socket. You want to be careful here because you don't want to bend the pins. And now to prove that it works without a shield, I connect a coin cell battery to the two power pins of the attiny, then connect the LED to pin 0, and as you can see, it blinks as it did before on the shield. I think it's pretty amazing it can run an Arduino board off a coin cell. Hopefully you found this video interesting, and as always, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment sections below. Thanks a lot.